After completing my first underrated indie games list, I couldn't help but feel there were some very strong omissions, so today, I'd like to show you five more. One Step From Eden is the kind of game you see gameplay of and then immediately dash to the Steam store to learn more about it. Channeling the Battle Network series, Eden has you darting between tiles to avoid and deal damage at a breakneck pace with a custom deck of cards that you accumulate over multiple battles. The game's difficulty curve is steep, and so is the learning curve, but once you've broken yourself in and gotten a couple of battles under your belt, you'll develop a sixth sense for being quick on your feet and knowing the range and potency of your cards on the fly. You'll steadily unlock more characters that each have their own default moves to complement whatever deck of cards you have, and they feel surprisingly different from each other. Unfortunately, the game hasn't been updated since April, and I get that a game doesn't have to be constantly updated to stay relevant or good, but with other roguelikes like Isaac and Dead Cells, it becomes easy to be left behind without at least some support. Pick this one up if you like moving really fast and shooting back really fast. Tangle Deep is similar to games like Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup or Tales of Mage Irel. You weasel your way through dungeon corridors with enemies only moving when you do, gaining new skills with each level up, and making the best tactical decisions in and between battles. When you're not exchanging blows and casting spells, you'll tend to your captured pets in town or change job classes while retaining all of your previously learned attacks. Using a good mobility move to escape an enemy or whittling away at their health bar from afar with an arrow feels and sounds really nice. Seriously, the sound effects in this game are up there with most action games. Where Tangle Deep falters is... the small stuff, and I ultimately think that's why it hasn't risen to the status it's deserving of. Pixel art is fine for the most part, but occasionally you'll see something that looks somewhat off. The menus are samey, cumbersome, and hard on the eyes. Every time I paused this game to consume food, I was reminded of how much I hate this thing. Still, for the most part, Tangle Deep is a good, frequently updated game with lots of difficulty modifiers you can turn on and off. In all due fairness, people have caught on to the underrated status of Momodora more recently and have done some videos on it, but I still don't think it's quite where it needs to be. There's nothing super fancy about this game. It doesn't have any secret magic ingredient or game-altering mechanic interwoven through the whole thing. It's just good at pretty much everything it sets out to be. It's on the shorter side, almost as if to step away gracefully before it overstays its welcome. You'll set out on a Metroidvania-styled quest defeating bosses and enemies while amassing different items and movement options to transverse previous dead ends you've encountered as well as the main path itself. Typical Vania stuff, but it becomes more than the sum of its parts when every individual piece of the design is as good as it is. You start with two different attacks as well as the dodge roll, and even with just these, combat is pretty fun. Melee attacks feel great, and you use a freaking maple leaf. Honestly, that's impressive. An evolution of the Flash games that came before, Monster's Den Godfall is a no-nonsense turn and grid based RPG that will keep your attention longer than you'd realize. While the first games had you create four-man band parties to go off on quests, Godfall has you creating multiple parties and keeping them on payroll to help better your mercenary company. This is similar to what Desktop Dungeons did in relation to its freeware predecessor. It takes the gameplay from the first games and makes it feed into an overarching progression system. Most attacks use all of your turn wheel, but with certain abilities only half of it is actually used. This and other standouts like the fact that each class has multiple stances that don't cost you a turn gives you a little bit more tactical dials to work with than other turn-based games, and you can come up with some pretty crazy party comps later down the line. Did I mention that this game still gets updated? Like, he just recently added a new area, and this came out more than five years ago. The total absence of any animation and the resolution issues are reasonable to be iffy about, but if you're at all skeptical about Monster's Den, you have three different free games you can try in your browser anytime before you make a decision. Botvice is a gallery shooter that will force you to exploit all of the iframes in your dodge roll and every piece of cover you can find. You play as Aaron... Uh, I... I don't know. I couldn't make it past the intro cutscene. The game itself, though, is fun. You have lots of different weapons to dispose of enemies, and in pure video game fashion, there are combustible objects that you can destroy to take out many at once. You even have the ability to lock onto the nearest target, which helps a ton in the middle of really dense firefights. The colors are pretty and the pixel art is good, but it isn't anything we haven't seen before. You'll be surprised at how many firefights you can withstand once you get good at this thing. While it doesn't have the meat on its bones to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with other games on this list, it certainly deserves more praise than none at all. Thank you. 